heads of various parliaments, some are called the presidents, uh, some are called the councils, uh, and several other names. I salute all of you, uh, leaders of various legislatures of parliaments, members of parliaments who may be here, ladies and gentlemen. I want to say this is a very important moment for me, President of the Parliament of Africa, the Parliament of the African Union that looks at the matters of the continent of Africa. So it's really my great pleasure and honor. And I want to say I am glad and very happy to be with you in one of the largest Arab, African, Muslim countries called Algeria. Algeria is a country with a great history. Algeria is a country with a great, great history. It's a liberator of the continent. I come from Zimbabwe. We got our independence in 1980, April. And I can tell you that from the 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s, Algeria provided economic material, even military support to, to come to Zimbabwe, a country of almost a million kilometers from here. They have done a lot for this continent, and we should not forget Algeria for that law, role that they played. That will remain in history permanently that this is a great country which is not selfish, but it also looks at other brothers and sisters across the world. I've listened to presentations and I had a speech earlier on. Then I said, if I read the speech, I'll repeat too much because a lot of good things have been said already. All I need to emphasize first, and I want to start on what the speaker of Turkey said. I was actually waiting to hear that when he talks of Islamophobia. He used the term Islamophobia. I copied from him. When I came, I didn't have that terminology. The only terminology I had, this head, these things that have happened recently, as Pan-African Parliament, I want to stand here and say, we condemn and we join with you to condemn those people in the countries that are guilty of Islamophobia, that are attacking Islamic institutions, Islamic assets. Be assured that the Parliament of Africa is, is, is with you on this matter. Call us anytime, anywhere, we will stand with you as the Parliament of Africa. We want to condemn in the strongest terms these attacks. And they were well listed by the speaker from Turkey when he spoke. He listed all of them, so I need not repeat. But I may want to refer to the fact that in uh, what happened recently in Sweden, in addition to what you said, it baffles us because Europe, Europe, and I know some diplomatic calls from Europe could be here, some diplomats, some ambassadors, and I think they need to take this message back home to their countries that you, Europe, often you stand high and lecture to Africa, to the Arab world, about tolerance and the observance of human rights. You want to stand very high on these issues. But to believe that the Swedish authorities gave the perpetrators 
who burned the Holy Quran. They, they, they gave them permission and the police protection to do so. And that after that, when that happened, the European community has been silent on this matter. It's a, a demonstration of clear religious intolerance from the preachers of tolerance. Now, you, you are aware that when Europe stands to speak about human rights, they are not genuine. They are not genuine. They choose to attack. Their human rights are based on who is involved. And we should unite. We should now unite. PUIC, the Parliamentary Union of Islamic Countries, let us unite. These people, for a long time, they first colonized us. They then took all the wealth that you see in Europe came from Africa. And now they continue in a different form around the way the human rights and the abuse Africa. To the extent that they even say, preach to us, like in Africa, and I know the Muslim world won't accept this, homosexuality, they take that as a right. Shame, you are a shame, homosexuality, shame, shame to Europe. That is shame. But they want to preach to us, those are what you call you abominable human practices. They do not fit anywhere on the earth. Of course, in the heaven is worse. And we should stand together that the attack on the Muslim communities and beliefs cannot be accepted by Africa. There is Islamic God. We cannot accept that. Now, the objectives of the PUIC, one of the objectives, and I'm reading this one because it is similar to objective in the protocols establishing Pan-African Parliament. One of the objectives is to foster coordination among the peoples of the world in order to respect and defend human rights and human principles and establishment of peace based on justice. This is common to both the PIC and the Pan-African Parliament. We share almost everything that you exist for. We have a common agenda from the way we operate. And not by convenience. Are you aware, uh, your excellencies in this room, participants, that we are just one? The, it may be Islamic world, Africa, we are one because I believe you are aware that of the 55, whether 55, 56 members of the PUIC, 27 of those countries are members of the Pan-African Parliament. More than half of the membership of the PIC are members of the Pan-African Parliament. So for all intents and purposes, we are just one. We are one. And from now on, as we go forward, let us show clearly that we are one. On everything, let us have a common agenda. Let us agree on how we move forward on various issues. Let's move forward after today that we are one. And the challenges that we, 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 we have are the same. Same, same. If we listen to all these presentations, everything that you said, is what we also are fighting for or against as the African continent. Because, of course, your major, the majority of your members are also part of PAP. So we are just one family. The challenges are the same, and I will not go through again and you talk about uh, peace and security. We don't talk about, no, no, I will be wasting time. And I, in the speech by His Excellency, the President of Algeria, which was delivered here, again, those were well, well articulated. But I just want to emphasize that among all that list of challenges, which are just the same thing, 
the issue of Palestine, I also want to emphasize that one. As Pan-African Parliament, we stand with the Palestinians. We stand with the Palestinians to the extent that, Excellencies, each time we have a session in the Pan-African Parliament, we give the Palestine, Palestinian uh, representatives an opportunity to give feedback to our parliament. We allow them to address our parliament as Palestine, and then we agree on what next, how we should assist them. So we are together. We are together on the issue of Palestine. Count the Pan-African Parliament that is one. We stand in solidarity on those issues, and will not go back. You know, the issue of uh, peace and security, again, just touch a bit about the food security, food security issues and the rest. But I want to say, imagine terrorism of late has gone now south up to Mozambique in southern Africa. And the only reason why there is terrorism in Mozambique is because they discovered gas. And terrorism, as you know, is always sponsored by the West. So they are sponsoring terrorists in Mozambique. Where, wherever there are minerals on our continent, DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo, for example, one of the world's, wealthiest countries on the continent, has been in war ever since. Why? Because the Western countries sponsor that conflict. So it is through unity that we can uh, make sure that we put a block. Several good speeches have been delivered here, and I'm avoiding repeating a, by all means, because you, the speeches have been very good. Pan African Parliament, addressing you for the first time, I should mention that we have um, 55 countries that are members of this parliament on the continent of Africa. Each country sends a delegation of five MPs. So the total strength of our parliament is 275 across the whole continent from uh, Cape Town in South Africa all across to, we can say, Cairo, Egypt, or to Algiers, or at least to the north. So we are a large parliament. Now, as guest of honor has announced, I just want to emphasize that what is now important is how do we move forward? Pan-African parliament and the parliamentary union of Islamic countries. We need, beyond this conference, to meet and craft practical ways as to how we should move and work together more meaningfully in a practical manner so that we don't just address conferences i go back and you go back and we are we we meet again at another maybe the, this is the 17th then we meet next at the 18th in between nothing has happened i want to request that let's move ahead practically agree on actionables and then we move forward otherwise i want to say we wish you i wish you and i wish myself because i've said we are together so i don't wish you i wish myself i wish part of parliament and the parliamentary union uh, of islamic countries a good life together beyond this conference thank you very much